Hi guys and welcome back. Today I'm working on this new painting, which is an oils. I am so excited about this new step that I'm taking, this new medium that I'm trying to figure out. I can't wait to talk to you guys a little bit more about the process, the things that I've learned, the things that have been an absolute pleasure as far as working with oils has been. But I do want to give a really quick thank you to the sponsor of this video today, which is Skillshare. And I absolutely love their product. I personally use it all the time. If you don't know what they are, they are an online learning community where they have thousands of classes available and all sorts of different types of categories, but a lot of them are very creatively based or based in business for creatives. And that is exactly the kind of stuff that I want to get more information about and learn as much as I can about. Their annual plan is less than $10 a month, which is a really great deal for how much information you're getting. And that's unlimited access to all of their classes. And I actually have a link down in the description that'll give two months free for the first 500 people who follow that link and go redeem it. It's a great way to see how you like it, how it can work into the way that you're learning your new tools. And yeah, I just, I really do genuinely love it. I love what I've been able to find and learn over, over on Skillshare. But anyways, let's kind of jump into this, this painting and this process that I'm going through. One of the classes that I found most helpful over on Skillshare while I was prepping to learn how to do oils. Cause if you don't know, this is like basically, basically my first painting in oils, but there was one teacher, her name was Christy Gordon. And I'll actually have a link specifically to this video that I'm talking about, but she had a video called glazing and other painting techniques. And that was incredibly helpful because that's the thing that I think I'm most excited about really figuring out in oil paints because that's the thing I love the most about watercolors. That's glazing and creating these really luminous effects by having lots of layered colors. So it was really helpful to watch her video and she's very, very skilled at these oil paints, which is really nice, but, but it was great. She talked a lot about how to do all sorts of different effects that add together to create things like a glow on a candle, which is what I really want out of oil paints. That's the thing that I've been feeling really stagnated with as far as watercolors go. And I, I'll say this really quick. I love so many things about watercolors. So I like that I can have a different medium that can fulfill different needs and different types of pieces. So it's not taking over everything that I'll ever be doing. It just adds to what I can draw from and be able to work through and work on and get the most out of each medium that I'm using in the moment. And right at the beginning, you can see kind of a, a mistake or evidence of the fact that I don't really 100% understand what I'm doing yet. But at the beginning, I had like the, the groundwork of these glowing effects in the background that were more of a like red pinkish color. And when I was starting to mix the two, this like red color with the blue that I had mixed up, on the actual painting, it like immediately turned into this muddy gray color. And I thought, you know, any blue, any red, they would mix together probably okay. But this is really just a sign that I need to understand the pigments that I'm using better so I know which ones mix best. I also think that I really should have gone in and added another kind of a border color, a, a transition color, I guess, between the red warm and then the blue maybe a purple so that I could preserve a little bit more of a saturated color in between and then they could blend into each other. So that was my first kind of mistake where I learned that, that it doesn't blend the same way that I kind of expect it to, which is fun and exciting. There's the same kind of thing with watercolors. There's certain paints that just look really gorgeous when you mix them together and others that don't quite have the same effect that I'm looking for. And it's just learning about your paints and your pigments because they all have different behaviors. That's uh, one of the things that I found really interesting when I was diving into learning traditional paintings, which actually wasn't that long ago, was how much you could really get a different personality from one type of paint or one type of pigment over another. But luckily I think the background ended up pretty okay. I'd love to be able to figure out to get that glowing effect a little bit better, but I ended up just adding a little bit more purple in those areas and just blending it out. So then it has this really subtle, like darker shift to it. And then it pops back up into the lighter, brighter blue. And then I added stars, which 
was maybe the most exciting part about this piece was being able to go in and blend this hazy glow and then add these really sharp white highlights in the middle and it looked like it was glowing it looked like stars and it was so satisfying so immediately it was a feeling that i hadn't had in a long time where i knew what i wanted and it was able to just immediately turn into this really i don't know really pretty effect i was really excited about that actually and i think one of the like first steps baby steps i started making into understanding oils is a little bit more how to blend of course i have a long way to go as far as how to get like these really completely perfect blends from one color to another obviously with my first mistake but but simply meaning like blending so that it's nice and smooth gradient i found that it's best for me at least to lay the color down and then i have a couple of these i guess you could describe them as like a mop brush they have these spread out bristly bristles and then I could just go straight in with the brush with no paint on it and carefully do these soft circles until they started blending together and then I would spread that out a little bit more go on one side and then the other and then carefully blend things in with these empty dry brushes with lots of spread out bristles and it was actually surprising at how well it started to work and it was really exciting because I have a couple of brushes that they used to be for watercolors and I think maybe I use them for oils a little bit, but they're really kind of fluffed and frayed and a little bit on the damage side. They're not great watercolor brushes anymore, but they are perfect for this blending that I was learning how to do. And I have a couple in a few different sizes, so it's just really exciting to, to find other tools that I've had and weren't quite working. I didn't want to throw them away. And then suddenly they work perfectly for this new, new thing that I have. So that is another testament of why I never like to throw away my art tools. There's always going to be a point where I come back to something and I can use it in a different way and it solves a new problem. I think the shirt was probably the part that I was the most apprehensive and nervous about because I wanted to have this glowing effect of his bones glowing through his skin and then his shirt but since i'm very new to oil paints i don't really know the right kind of approach for it i looked up a lot of references of things that were as close to it as i could but ultimately there was never quite that perfect thing so i kind of had to just take a leap of faith and go for it trust my gut and try to make it look the, the way that i imagined in my head and I think for the most part, it ended up better than I thought it would, which is exciting and good. It certainly is a kind of technique that I would like to get a lot better at. Getting like the translucent effect that you can get with oils, even when you're not necessarily doing it with translucent, translucent paint, but painting things that are translucent. That's something that I would really like to figure out and get better at. It's an effect that I think is absolutely gorgeous in artwork and it creates a lot of life and layering to a piece. And I just need to, to buckle down and do some research and figure it out and learn how to do it better. Probably the one thing that was the most helpful to start learning is how to handle the mediums that I'm using to get the best results that I wanted. It always seems so mysterious, especially with like the fat over lean rule and what mediums to use to get the effect that I want and how much to use and drying time and all this stuff. It just felt like something that as much research as I did until I actually did it, I would never understand it. And that's true. I just need to dive in and experience it and see what sticks, what works, along with all the research that I'm doing. But the one medium that I used a lot while I was painting this piece was actually Gal Kid Light. And that's a Gamblin brand, but you can find lots of other brands that are called Alkids. And this was amazing because it allowed my painting to dry really, really fast, which is kind of like the, the blessing of oil paints is that you can spend a lot of time really blending things and having it wet for a long time but by mixing this medium it allowed me to start working on it almost exactly the next day because it dried so quickly when i used this medium it was almost completely dry to the touch when i woke up which was great because i had a relatively short time frame for this piece i gave myself a week to start to finish and i think in the future i'll take longer than that to finish a full oil painting but but this was like the perfect solution it allowed me to blend and get all the effects that I wanted relatively quickly and then well 
in the amount of time that I wanted, it stayed wet. And then when it was time to readdress it and time to repaint it the next day, it was ready to take another layer of paint. I also used a bit of Gamsol, which is my paint down there that I'm using. It's odorless and a mineral spirit. And I know that you can find a lot of other options for paint thinner type substitutes that have no fumes or almost no fumes, which is really important for me where it's winter. I don't want my window open and I have other living people who live with me. So, so that was a good solution for that. I didn't notice any smell at all, but I mixed a little bit of that in with my paints as well as that other medium that I was using. This just helped thin it out even more. So it came down to a really thin, easy to apply layer where the Gawkid Light is a little bit more like a thin honey texture. It does thin the paint down, but I like it to be just a little bit thinner. So the balance of using the two together really helped me get the perfect benefits and combinations that I needed. I absolutely loved working in oils for this past week. I cannot wait to start new paintings and show you guys what I've learned, the progress that I've made. It's just gonna be really fun and exciting for me, I think. But I do actually have this painting and this original available at my shop. So if you'd like to own either version, I have a link in the description that'll take you to my art shop. I also have a link to my Patreon, which is a great way to support this channel. And don't forget to check out Skillshare if you're interested. There is that link down in the description for the two months for free for the first 500 people. And I think that's about it. I post every Wednesdays and Saturdays here on YouTube. So I will be back on Wednesday with another video. So thank you guys so much and I'll see you then.